Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Previously we created the texture class that represents a texture asset in the editor. The texture class contains information about the texture and provides the functionality to read the imported data, save the data to the asset file and load the asset file. Today we are going to write the Content Tools API functions, which are in charge of calling the C++ texture importer code and handling the exchange of data between the managed and unmanaged side of the application. We need a function that returns a three-dimensional array of slices and an icon. The icon may be null, in which case we just use the first image in the array of slices. So let's write this function now. First I'll make code regions for geometry and texture API functions. Well, it's gonna sound weird, but we need to import the import function in the same way we imported other API functions from the content tools DLO. This time we need to pass a struct that will hold the texture data and should mirror the one we have in C++. Again, we make it disposable to make freeing up the allocated memory easier. Then I'll just put these next to each other and kind of translate it from C++ to C Sharp. So pointers to byte arrays will become an int pointer, which doesn't mean that it points to a buffer of integers, but rather it's an integer sized pointer to data. Next, we need to add a new class for texture info which is a simple copy of C++ code. And finally, we add texture import settings class, which is again an exact copy of C++. After adding these in texture data, we write the dispose and finalizer functions. Note that this is not a destructor like in C++. It's called a finalizer, which is called when the garbage collector frees up the memory where this instance lives. When the dispose function is called by someone, we'll tell the garbage collector not to call the finalizer function. In texture import settings, we add a function that copies the import settings from the given texture. Remember that we have to join all source paths into one single string before we can hand them over to the C++ site. This is because passing an array of strings proved to be very hard, if not impossible, but I'd love to hear it if you know of a simple way of doing it. One more thing to note is that we don't use booleans in data structures that we pass to C++. This is because humans are a bunch of apes that can't decide upon the size of a boolean variable in different languages and different compilers. So a boolean is sometimes one byte and some other times four bytes, depending on language and compiler implementation. 
Integers in C-sharp are always 4 bytes, so we can rest assured that our data layout's not messed up after marshalling. Now we are ready to write our public import function, which we'll call when importing a texture. We start by checking if we have got at least one image source and create an instance of texture data. Note the using keyword, which makes sure that the dispose function is called after the variable goes out of scope. After setting up the try-catch block, we can call the C++ import function, passing it our texture data. After the function call, we check if it returned with an error code. I'm going to create the enumeration for the error codes. This is the same as the one we use in C++. For each item, I'll add a short description that can be used as part of an error message. When an error occurs, we can get the error code's description using our extension method, which we wrote in the previous video. We also throw an exception to let the rest of the pipeline know that something failed. Now before calling import, we need to fill in texture info and import settings. However, when we import a texture, we don't know anything about it yet and therefore we don't have any information to fill in texture info, so I might remove this function call later on, but we'll see. After importing the texture, we initialize the texture properties using texture info that was returned by the importer. We also need additional functions to put the imported images and their mipmaps in the array of slices and to get the icon for the imported texture. So we need to write these functions next, starting with get texture data info. This simply copies the respective properties from the texture. As I mentioned, this is probably not necessary when importing a texture. Next is a function that gets the returned texture info. This is basically the inverse of the previous function. The next two functions are get slices and get icon. In get slices, we need to read the data out of a buffer pointed to by subresource data, which is coming from the C++ importer. So we check that we have at least one image and that the buffer has a valid pointer and size. 
As far as I know, we can't read directly from the buffer and we need to copy it over to the managed site first using Marshall copy. Then I'll write a function that reads the content of this buffer and returns the array of slices. In addition to subresource data, we'll pass the array size, which is also used for depth if the texture is 3D, the number of MIP levels, and whether this is a 3D texture. After doing some basic checks, we need to calculate the depth for each MIP level. This is obviously always 1 if the texture is not 3D. That's why we create an array of 1s. However, if the texture is 3D, then the array size contains the depth of the top level MIP map. Remember that we can't have 3D texture arrays, so we can reuse the same parameter for array size as well as for texture depth. In order to calculate the depth for each MIP level, we simply divide the top level MIP depth by 2 if it's larger than 1. Then we write each depth into the array of depth per MIP level. Now we have all the information we need in order to read the images in the subresource data buffer. The inner loop is for depth slices. This should loop at least once. The second loop in between is for MIP levels and the outer loop is for array elements. The outer loop runs only once for 3D textures. And that's how we end up with a 3D array of slices, which is returned at the end. Next is the getIcon method. This is only used when the texture has a block compression format. If that's not the case, we can just use the first image in slices array to create an icon from. If it was block compressed, that means that the C++ importer made a decompressed icon image for us to use and we need to read it here. This is very similar to get slices function, except we just need to read only one image from the icon buffer. In fact, we can copy the code from get slices and repurpose it for getting the icon. Well, that's pretty much all we need in order to import images, construct a texture from them, and pass them to the editor. I see another typo here which I need to fix. Huh. That's weird. Looks like I made the same exact typo both in C Sharp and in C++. This should be primitive topology, not primitive topology. So I'm gonna find and replace them all with the correct spelling.
Oh yeah, this method can be static. We shouldn't forget to set the full path when we save a geometry asset. This should be elements buffer size. Well, I guess I'll be spending the rest of this video doing some small fixes, but don't go away yet because I might add something important. This should be a getter property. Remove some unnecessary usings. Fix a typo here. This should be dot h. I'll set the texture dimension default value to texture 2D because that's the most common use case. We don't need the format in the slice class. We can always get the texture format from the texture class. This should be private set. We don't want anyone but us to be able to change those juicy slices, do we? Here the parentheses are not necessary. These should be individual if statements, of course. I think we should also check if everything still works. So I'm going to delete all assets from the game project. As I mentioned in the last video, we can't read the old asset files anymore because we changed the header format. That's why I deleted everything. Now I can try and re-import the geometry assets again and test if it still works. I accidentally dropped a lot of FBX files onto the browser, so now it's going to import all of them. Looks like it worked. And we can inspect the models in the geometry editor as well. Okay, awesome. This is all I wanted to do in this episode. In the next episode, we are going to do a basic test of the texture importing code. And if that doesn't cause any problems, we can try and save the texture and also write a texture editor in order to be able to view the imported textures. Thank you so much as always for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.